I was worried about the grandbabies, worried about my mom, worried, worried what, what in the devil was going on. A violent night in Webster County ends with two people in the hospital. We've got the latest coming up on WCBI News. WCBI News at 6 starts now. Thank you for joining us. A nearly six hour shooting spree leaves a Webster County community in shock today. Two people were injured, including the shooter and a 15 year old girl. Sheriff Andy McCants says the teenager is recovering at NMMC in Tupelo. The shooter is in critical condition at UMC in Jackson. Our Jory Talley joins us in the studio with the details on the story. Ja Jory. That's right, Andrea. Sheriff McCants says the shooting started at about midnight and lasted until sunrise. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation has taken over the case, but several agencies were called in for backup during the shooting spree. When I shined the flashlight down there, he just pointed the gun back up this way and pow, 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 pow. And he was knocking, he was knocking pine cones out of the tree up there, so I cut the light off and got behind the swimming pool. Last night, my officers were attempting to arrest an individual in a domestic violence issue and shots were fired. My officers were fired upon. Homer Box lives on North Sapa Road, which is where the nearly six hour shooting spree came to an end. My neighbor called wanted to know what, where, where the gunshot was going on. I said, I didn't hear no gunshots. So I got up and got some clothes on, come outside and it was just pow, 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 pow. And uh, I come up here to check on my mom and hell, it was right down here at my neighbor's house. Box lives across the street from this mobile home. Two adults and three children were inside as gunfire ripped through the home. Multiple shots were fired. One young woman was injured. Uh, she was shot. She's okay. She's going to be fine. Um, and the individual attempted to leave the second scene, engaged the officers again, and he was wounded. But this wasn't the only crime scene. It started about five miles from here at a completely different location and came over here. My officers uh, were shot at uh, over there at the first scene and backed off and the, the subject ran and came over here in a vehicle. McCants says four of the sheriff's deputies' cars were shot at. Two of them were completely disabled. He and Box are amazed that no one was killed. I've been living here since 1962 and it's never nothing like this ever took place. I know the world's changing and it's, it's changing for the worst. The suspect is facing multiple charges. His name has not been released. The Octibaha and Choctaw County Sheriff's Departments, Eupora, Matheston, and Ackerman Police Departments, along with the MHP Special Operations Team, all assisted the Webster County Sheriff's Department. All right, Jory Talley in our studio with that story. Meanwhile, the investigation continues into a Wednesday night shooting at Chandler Park Apartments in Starkville. Police there have two suspects in custody today, but they are looking for a third man. DeMarcus Sly was taken, into, was taken in shortly after the incident. Quantavius Lawrence turned himself in last night. Starkville police are looking for Deontay Doss. While no one was hurt, there were some tense moments for people who live in this complex. The shots was like, boom, boom, boom. Look at the one and this guy running around here with the gun, just shooting back like this. It's a miracle nobody got hurt. And that investigation into the shooting still ongoing there in Starkville. A man wanted in connection with a shooting in Itala County is caught in Winston County. This morning, Sheriff Jason Pugh says his department got a tip that 21-year-old Ryan Steen had been spotted at Walmart in Louisville. When Pugh and his deputies got there, they found Steen sitting on a bench on the side of the building. Pugh says they arrested him without incident. Steen was wanted in connection to a late Wednesday night shooting in Itala County that left a woman injured. He has been taken back to Atala County. A Pontotoc man will find out Friday how much prison time he will do for impersonating an officer and trying to kidnap a Lee County woman. 45-year-old Lewis Scott was convicted of attempted kidnapping today. That crime took place in August of 2017 when Scott used fake police lights to trick a woman to pull over near Birmingham Ridge Road. The intended victim spotted a knife in Scott's hand and drove away before he could harm her. He later did the same thing to a woman in Union County and abducted her. District Attorney John Weddle says he will seek a life with no parole sentence in court tomorrow. Time to turn things over to meteorologist Jacob Dickey to get a first look at our forecast today. 
Lots of sunshine out there today. Temperatures climbing into the 80s. Very nice look in our Alpha Insurance SkyCam network from Columbus, Tupelo, downtown Louisville, Mississippi, and at Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon, Alabama. Tupelo sitting at 87 right now. Dew points in the 60s out there. Has a little bit of a summer feel out there. That will continue here for the rest of the evening here as well as the next couple of days. The 87 in Columbus. Notice in Birmingham, though, down to 69. Some showers and storms pushing on through there. We've had a few in our area. We may see a few more before Sunday when the rain chances really tick up. I've got details on that coming up in just a bit. Memorial Day is just around the corner. It is the unofficial kickoff to summer, and for many, the holiday means cooking out or taking to the road. Law enforcement will also have a bigger presence on those roads, trying to keep everyone safe. Our Allie Martin finds out how they are gearing up for a big weekend. In his nearly 30 years in law enforcement, Chickasaw County Sheriff James Myers knows Memorial Day weekends are busy, and that means extra patrols and safety checkpoints. We try to schedule our shifts out to where uh, people are out more uh, during the day, uh, as well as late evenings, you know, trying to keep the roads uh, patrolled really heavy. Uh, we'll be working with the, the highway patrol and uh, naturally with the Nash Trace Rangers. Sheriff Myers plans ahead for the extra manpower needed for the Memorial Day patrols. He says more officers on the road not only makes it safer for the public, but also gets criminals off the streets. The public would be surprised at the number of people that, uh, that are intercepted at safety checkpoints that are wanted for a various number of crimes. You know, uh, you know we run somebody's uh, driving history and it, we come back with a, an arrest warrant out of another state or uh, yeah. you know, a local jurisdiction. Two counties away, members of the Law Enforcement Liaison Network meet before every holiday at Taylor's Place. It gives them a chance to go over grants that are available to police departments and sheriff's offices for extra enforcement before holidays like Memorial Day. The grants help provide extra patrolmen to be able to be out because the towns and cities, a lot of these counties cannot afford the extra money to pay extra folks to come out and try to help these holiday weekends. So the grants are invaluable to being able to put more people on the street. Spelling says the grants will specifically cover extra enforcement for seatbelt usage and also ensuring children are properly restrained in child seats. Allie Martin, WCBI News. The Memorial Day enforcement period starts Monday and goes through June the 2nd. Well, safety on the water, also a big concern for Memorial Day, and police will have extra patrols to help make sure people have a fun, safe holiday. Tishomingo County Sheriff John Daughtry will have deputies at J.P. Coleman State Park, Bay Springs Lake, and Tishomingo State Park. The sheriff says officers will be looking out for boaters who may be under the influence. He's encouraging people to be aware of others who are on the water. The sheriff says a little common sense goes a long way. Of course, boats don't have brakes on them, and, and you know you need to be in charge of your boat at all times. And, and we want everybody to have fun skiing and all of that, but do it in a safe manner. Remember, by state law, there must be at least one U.S. Coast Guard-approved life jacket for each person in a boat. Well, school is out, but business is one college in one college town. Rather, hasn't slowed down just yet. We find out why when we come back. Welcome back. For college towns like Oxford and Starkville, the summer months can be slow, but sports tournaments can give the sagging summer sales a shot in the arm. Our Riley Livingston takes a look at what the postseason is bringing to the city of Oxford. Graduation is over and summer school hasn't begun. This is usually a quiet time in Oxford, but the city is gearing up for a busy weekend. Ole Miss is hosting the NCAA Regional Softball Tournament, and that means fans are taking over. It's unexpected, so we love that, and we love that we can fill hotel rooms this weekend and that we can bring visitors here um, from out of town to come shop and dine in our restaurants and support um, the Ole Miss women's softball team. Mary Allen Hedges says the visitors and the business are already pouring in. The hotels, I talked to them earlier today and they said some of the teams had arrived yesterday and that more fans would be coming in today through the weekend and I think you'll start to see fans, you know, milling around the square and shopping and dining. She says it's nice to have a boost in visitors, especially now that school is out. After graduation, it tends to be a little quieter in town, but with um, orientations happening at the University of Mississippi, town tends to stay pretty steady during the week. Um, 
but we're, like I said, really excited, especially the weekend after graduation. Local restaurants and stores are making plans to prepare for more customers. We have um, somebody in our office. She's our partnerships manager, and she serves as the liaison between our office and all of the businesses and the partners within the community to make sure that they know, you know, hey, you might want to have some extra staff on hand because of this happening. Just so people know, hey, just be, be aware and be ready to host all these visitors that we'll have coming into town. And Hedges says the SEC softball tournament isn't the only reason for an increase in visitors. FNC Park is hosting a softball tournament as well. Well, discount store chain Fred's is making a second round of store closings, and once again, several area cities are touched. The Fred's in Starkville is among the locations targeted in this new round of cuts. Other area stores closing are in Amory, Corinth, Oxford, and the last remaining Fred's in Tupelo. The Aliceville, Alabama store is also on the list. The 104 stores announced today will start going out of business sales immediately and will close by the end of June. Tomorrow we're heading for 90, the first time in 2019. Lots of sunshine and very warm. The chance for some rain and storms is there, though, into the weekend. I've got those details for you coming up after the break. For WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Summer seems like it's here. Those temperatures at the 6 o'clock hour in Columbus at 88. Dew point values in the middle 60s out there has a little bit of that summertime feeling. As we look across the region, 87 in Amory, 88 in Columbus, making it 87. It's 89 in Aliceville. We've had a few rain and storms off to our east here. We've seen them in Alabama as expected. Overall in our area, though, we've kept things fairly dry, had some clouds here and there. Our visible satellite showing just some of those puffy summertime cumulus clouds out there. In fact, the clouds is what we got to talk about today at Oklahoma Elementary. Maybe our last WCBI weather school visit of the year. The fourth graders had a great time with them talking about tornadoes, severe weather, summertime weather, and more. Lots of fun getting up there. We always love getting to go visit students in classrooms around the area. As we look ahead through tonight, temperatures will be falling into the middle 70s out there by 9 p.m. into the 60s overnight by morning, looking at a mix of sun and clouds. Staying dry, though, I think we'll see 65 in Columbus. Amory down to 64. Starkville and Louisville also at 64. 65 in Calhoun City. As we head into our Friday, partly cloudy throughout the day, temperatures will warm quickly. Upper 80s, even 90 for some of us. Look for south winds between 2 and 7 miles an hour. Got 90 in Columbus, West Point, and Starkville. 88 in Calhoun City. Tupelo at 88. We'll get to 87 in Vernon. Cannot rule out an isolated shower in some spot in the area, but overall will stay dry throughout the day Friday and also into Saturday. Now, as we look ahead here, we think that the weather is going to continue to pick up with those warm temperatures on Saturday. Sunday, though. Rain may have knocked those temperatures down into the middle 80s, still a little bit above average, looking at those upper 80s all the way through the middle part of next week. As we watch that system come on through here, high pressure keeps pumping that gulf moisture into our region Friday and on Saturday. Notice then by Saturday night into Sunday during the day, a batch of rain and storms will push our way. Could see some higher rainfall totals with that half inch to an inch seems to be at the ballpark. Good news is, though, I'm not really expecting any severe weather out of this. We'll keep monitoring things. Seems like we may just have some showers and thunderstorms to deal with on Sunday, perhaps into Monday. Most of this rain, I think, will fall on Sunday. However, we'll just keep our eyes on things as we head into the weekend. For tonight, look for middle 60s out there. An isolated shower can't be ruled out before 9 p.m. I think we're going to keep things dry, though. Probably dry on Friday and Saturday, too. We'll just monitor for an isolated shower. Sunday, though, rain and storms seem likely. We'll call them scattered to numerous. They may last into Monday before we are dry, warm, and humid and summer-like as we head into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. The 4A, the 4A Baseball Championships start with a bang. New Hope begins the day with a thriller. See the highlights next in sports. WCBI First Alert Weather School is brought to you by Emerson Animal Hospital in West Point. WCBI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Day two of the high school baseball state championships at Trustmark Park. New Hope hoping to erase last year's title game memories starting this year off with a bang. Trojans taking on Sumrall in game one of the 4A Baseball State Championship. Bottom second, two outs, good start for the Trojans. Two RBI single to left. Landon Sanderson slides into 
home for the run. New Hope up two to nothing. But top of the fourth, Ole Miss football signee Dennis Jackson with a two RBI single. Summerall takes a seven to two lead. But New Hope puts on the rally caps. Peyton Springfield hits one to short and gets a run across the plate, so it's a 7-3 Summerall lead. New Hope rallies all the way back. It's a 7-6 ball game. Ryan Burt absolutely mashes one to right. For some reason, this one was ruled a double, an inside the park, or not an inside the park, a, uh, a ground rule double, so it doesn't matter because one batter later, it's Ryan Presley steals the game. Walks it off. That's your ball game, folks. Presley is the hero to right field. That's all she wrote. Walk off single. New Hope gets the W, eight to seven after trailing by five. One win away from a state championship. Smithville taking on Stringer in the 1A championship. Seminoles in their third straight state championship game. 2-2 tie. Tucker Hood with a hit to shallow right. Off the outfielder's glove, the big fella Cole Huey sliding in for the triple. He'd be rewarded for the hustle because Jordan Wardlaw with a base hit here. Huey gets at home, slide, safe. Seminoles go up 3-2. That's really all they would need as MSU commit Jared Johnson finishes the game. Eight strikeouts, filthy curveball, freezing the batter there. Smithville goes on to win 4-2 in game one. North Pontotoc looking to win the school's first ever baseball state championship. Off to a good start in game two. As of last check, the Vikings up 3 to nothing over McGee. They won yesterday, so one more win for North Pontotoc, and they're the 3A state champs. We'll have the highlights and recap tonight on WCBI Sports, as well as the 5A matchup in which Lafayette looks to stay alive against West Jones. The National Fast Pitch Coaches Association naming its all-region teams littered with Bulldogs and Rebels. MSU's dynamic duo of Mia Davidson and Fale Lua named to the first team, as well as Ole Miss outfielder Kylan Becker. And on the second team, Mississippi State's Kat Moore and Ole Miss's Molly Jacobson. The Bulldogs begin the NCAA tournament tomorrow in Seattle versus Seattle at 6.30 p.m. The Rebels will host Chattanooga in round one, first pitch at 6 p.m. The final week of the regular season of SEC play for baseball, the race for the SEC regular season crown will be close with every game this weekend, meaning the possibility of a title. Vanderbilt at the top, taking a look at the overall standings, but a razor thin margin, Arkansas one game back, Mississippi State two games back of Vanderbilt for the outright regular season crown, and Georgia right there with them. The Bulldogs will need a lot of help if it wants to take home the regular season crown for the first time since 2016. Vanderbilt on the road against Kentucky. They're already up 5 nothing in game one. Arkansas on the road against Texas A&M. The West in general remaining razor thin. Bulldogs and Razorbacks separated by one game. Ole Miss three games back. Rebels battling to break back into the hosting conversation at Tennessee. At last check, the Vols were up one to nothing in the first inning. But we'll recap all the baseball coming up at 10 right here on WCBI Sports. The last six your forecast. Andre was just looking at some new data here after uh, the, the main weather hit there. Notice how we're in the upper 80s to near 90 for the next seven days. Mm -hmm. In the extended outlook, we may very well continue that warm weather through Memorial Day weekend. Seems like summer is moving on in, and it may be here to stay with that heat and that humidity. There's a chance for some scattered showers and storms on Sunday and Monday. Perfect timing for Memorial Day. It's sort of the unofficial kickoff to summer anyway. Absolutely. All right. That is the news at 6 o'clock. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening, everyone.